Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Quaddy Potty. Cashy joined by Nick. How are you, mate? Big weekend. Yeah, all right, man. All right. Um, yeah, it was, it was all right. wasn't wasn't anything too red hot to be up and about, but I snagged a couple winners midday, back to back, which which really helped. But um, yeah, not the worst day, not the best day, but we move on. We did make some money in the end. Yeah, just scraped through with the green, thanks to your value winners there. Um, it's just it's such a hard day, punters, as we mentioned last week. Uh, just Epsom Day, like, because the racing's so good. It's hard to come through in the green. Yes, we didn't make massive profit, but we managed to scrape through thanks to your $12 winner um, and a couple others, including, uh, we'll just get straight into it, we'll touch on Melbourne first, Fia Sestina, back, gets yeah. the job done at what is was just a silly price, we thought, and, you know, proved the bookies silly. Yeah, I, I guess so. I got a bit worried there when um, that rain came around in Melbourne. So I thought, did I, I thought um maybe even a late scratching, but obviously they were confident. Um, Waller Camp was confident in sending it there and, and leaving it there. So um, obviously they're looking at the Cox plates. Even if it took a loss, they wouldn't have really cared, I don't think. So, yeah, got the win. Buckaroo was a worry. Good run in the end from Buckaroo as well. But Vistina shows why it's, if not one of the most talented, the talent, most talented horse in Australia right now. Yeah, look, I didn't actually watch this one live because I bumped into one uh, – Jack Archdale or Jarchi from the We Mean World podcast, and I was too busy talking to him, and it wasn't until I walked back in the room and I heard all the cheers and I looked up on the screen and saw them just pass the line, and I swore under my breath because it meant that I'd missed my opportunity to get on her with the bookies. I was walking in all day planning on loading her, uh, but, I mean, swings and roundabouts, I'll, I'll get it back at some point in the carnival, I hope. Um, but, yeah, it was just super happy. And then when I look back on the replay, um, like I said, she was either going to dominate it was going to make a sweat. She made a sweat, but winners win, got the job done. Uh, but now you got to think, gee, Elias and Buckaroo, surely they are just one and two seeds going into the Caulfield Cup from here, you'd think. Uh, I, I definitely think so. I like Elias in the in the Caulfield. Obviously, I've got that futures card. Um, $26 is very juicy. Um, looking at it, it'll probably come in, I reckon, at the 7 or $8 mark, depending on who, who gets there. Um, but, yeah, look, we'll wait and see, I guess. Um Anything can happen on Caulfield, Caulfield Cup Day, so we'll, yeah. Yeah, uh, and then taking us to the next race, probably to unpack probably seeds three and four, or maybe they're amongst the top four, whether it's uh, Elias Buckaroo and then Land Legend and Zardozzi coming out of that Metropolitan. That's definitely a top four. What are the order that we could argue all day? But um, what were your thoughts on the Metropolitan, especially when it came down to that protest? Yeah, I thought, thought I was getting away from you a little bit there, man. Oh, I was so... Nervous. I sat there and I watched it. And when Land Legend came up in the frame, I was so torn because I was like, damn, Zardozzi would have been a massive sp like get for the pod there. Another big winner. We would have been much more in the green. But then you also would have been like 25 points in front of me for the tip off because you've already stretched out to 15 points now. And I was like, oh, I'm almost guaranteed to be sitting in Maccas at that point. But did you see anything in the, the protest or do you think the right decision was made? Oh, I think it was the right decision in the end. You can't really – you yeah. can't I, – I don't, I don't think – yeah, there's not much. Got, you, see she, that, you see that all the time. Yeah, she got bumped, yes. If she doesn't get bumped, does she win? Maybe, but she had 400 metres to get past her. Yeah. So – Yeah, there's – um, it is what it is, but – If that happens 100 metres out, maybe it's a different story. No, like, yeah. I know a lot I, of people were quite angry, but – I uh, think it's it's because it's such a highly – um. A lot of people spend a lot of money in this game and it's obviously need, the right decision needs to come out because there's a lot of money in the punting and stuff. So obviously there's going to be that protest to have, but at the end of the day, um, you can't change a result like that. And if it did change a result due to protest, I'd be pretty, I, I think that'd be upsetting to see for racing. Like that's the argument was people were saying like, surely this gets upheld um, because on a random weekday it gets upheld. And there is that continuity that you probably want but again, like I said, uh, maybe she gets a he her head down at the right point. Maybe she gets half a head in front. But she had 400 metres to pick herself back up and do so. And she got as close as she probably could in that instance. Again, 50, yeah. 100 metres out, maybe a different story. I don't know. It's like uh, I, I see I see both sides. Obviously, I had my horse. It was my horse. So looking at it, it's um got a bit of a biased opinion. But um, yeah, it would have been nice. But I think you see it a lot. And yeah, I think at the end of the day, you can't, you you don't want to pick winners like that, and you don't want to lose a race like that, in a, especially in a big race like that. So, 
Um, it is what it is. But yeah, oh, geez, it would have been nice to get Zardozzi there. I think. Yeah, would have gone. Would have been real nice. A couple, couple more dollars for us. 100%. Okay, the Epsom Chairwolf, too good in the end. Chad Schofield finally gets another Group 1, uh, which is great to see. Really good race, as always. You almost again, as Tom Kitten emerged. Oh, I thought yeah. you were going to get there. But then down the outside, Chairwolf just proved too good for them in the end. Yeah, definitely a little bit of a, a dark horse, um, if you pardon the pun, really. The... um. I feel like I've forgotten about in some of those races. I know we we didn't didn't look into into it that much. We definitely respected it, but not enough to put our bets on it. And there's not many times that we've really really respected that horse and put our own money on it. It's won the last couple, to be honest. But um, yeah, and it, the market always respects it. Punters out there seem to respect it, but we seem to let it go by yeah. the wayside because we just don't see it, you know, taking on the big horses. But now it's well and truly here. It's a Group One winner. Uh, it potentially heads to a champion stakes. It potentially heads to a Cox Plate. So clearly, it can hang. Yeah, Tom Kitten barrier in the end. That's all. It, all it came to, I think. Which sometimes is the case in the Epsom, whether or not in that big field they can actually get a clean run to the line and don't have to spend too much petrol from barriers. I thought did pretty well from where he was, but look, is what it is. Could have been real out in front of you, mate. Oh yeah, if Tom Kitten's Dozy had come in, I was gone. But thank God I put all of your Group Ones to place. And we got a nice multi up for the uh, the punters on Dabble there. Um, also, two year olds. What do you think of them? Yeah, oh, the, they were the only couple races um, I, I got to watch live. I actually I watched a couple live um, with the boys. One interesting, very very interesting. There wasn't really a lot um, that really stuck out to me. Really, I was imp- like, I was like, yeah, okay. But the girls race. Um, what was it called? That one I forget. The girl, the girl, two year olds. A Bell Mercy won the girl. Very impressive. Very yeah. impressive. Very, very mature looking horse for a two year old. One very professional. Very maturely. Um, yeah. And then obviously we got a DM later in the week. I don't know if you saw that, mate, but I definitely did. With someone's got connections with that horse, and um, yeah, she texted us straight after the trial, saying, "Boys, this horse is very, very professional." And I said big call because at the time it wasn't expected to be favourite. Of course, Curry and Dream did come out. So that firmed into a heavy favourite and ran like it. Um, but out of the trials, she was professional looking, but wasn't one that jumped out to me as one that I want to be on in two weeks' time. She was one that I was looking at maybe a golden gift, maybe an autumn. So she's already gotten herself up the mat and gotten that one win. Now we see where she goes. Um, but I mean... Very interesting with that race. We were on voting rights and we were getting very excited because all of a sudden she was she 35s crunched. into like 16s, into 14s. Crunched. Gay Waterhouse, you know, obviously always needs to be respected. Maybe she's going to run a blinder here and then just didn't let down. But we did say last week that she is small and the rest of them needs education, needs to grow. Maybe she was a cheeky ruffy that you could get around and that was made clear on the day. Let's see how she goes in autumn with a bit more growth and a bit more education. Um, but when it comes to the boys, I was really mad that I didn't cover the Waterhouse trifecta like I always do. I just didn't do it this year, and it got up because, of course, it did. Um, King Kirk apparently heads to the Magic Millions now. Um, and I thought Tempestuous didn't lose any favours for me. I've got 100 to 1 in the slipper now. I'm happy with that. Uh, it's now into, like, 30s. Is it going to be there on slipper day? Who knows? But like I said last week, with these sort of races, always have five bucks on the slipper because, you know, if they do win the race, they're going to shorten. Fair enough. Uh, one more thing, Everest fallout. There's been quite a bit of it since we sat down last week. The field is now basically set except for the Coolmore slot, which everyone and their dog knows is going to be Storm Boy unless Switzerland comes out and runs an absolute nah. blinder this weekend. I think Switzerland's going to win, spoiler for later, but surely doesn't win so well that he's taking the spot off Storm Boy. No, I think Storm Boy um, will get it. Um, looks good. Um, yeah, and he's a bit of a dark horse. Again, using that twice now um, for the Everest. I think if it jumps well, does well, as well as Everest now ignited as a Group 1. Yes, it is now officially a Group 1 announced today. All Very Star much Mile so deserved. Well. All-Star Mile does not deserve it. It's a shit nah, race. I agree. But uh, Everest It might make it better, though. It, it might make it better. Point. I think. I think I, I like the concept of the All-Star Mile. Um, if you don't know how it works, punters. Um, it's been scrapped, though. The voting system's been scrapped. Oh, it's been scrapped, has it? Yep. Oh, I didn't know it's that. It's now just a standard race now, I think. I, I See, I thought that it gets voted on 
And okay, it was, but they scrapped it going into next year because they realized it wasn't really working. And actually, no, it, wasn't, attracting okay. it wasn't working. I like the concept, but it wasn't working. But I thought that that okay. Oh, that makes a bit more sense. Yeah, know? I'll just I'll quickly go through the field here. Um, again, put an asterisk over Storm Boy, he should be, but he's yet to be officially confirmed. Uh, I wish I win Steffi Magnetica, Jolly Star, Kiki Kick, uh, Sunshine in Paris, Lady of Camelot, Private Eye, Bella Nipatina. I am me, Growing Empire, and Traffic Warden. And then again, like I said, Storm Boy, most likely to be confirmed within the week. Yeah, it's good to see, again, probably a bit of a stronger field this year. A lot of um, strong girls. So yeah. I think the girls are definitely going to have a year out. Looking looking good. I think um, I was wrong with Think About It. Didn't run too well. We'll touch on that again quickly. Um, did not run not run very well as Bizarre well. Bizarre tactics. Made yeah. me think that it had already been locked in for a slot because that jumped so well. And they absolutely choked it all the way back to the last. They said to the stewards because the instructions were to get cover at all costs. I surely, if a horse just jumps that well, you just go on with the job. But he rode to instructions. Sometimes that's racing, and in the end, gave the horse no chance. Uh, and now it finds itself Everest less as the reigning champion. Yeah, interesting. Um, Bella Nip, good run. I know it didn't win. Good run. Just got stuck in a little bit of traffic at the wrong time and sh- moral beaten, in my opinion, is the best bet. I was very annoyed with it. Airman, how the hell does he do that? Oh, it's it's some horses like that just run out of their skin, best horse on the day. But Bella, I think it was a Bella, case of best ride compared to best horse on the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'd say so. Bella Nipitano was impressive, man. I honestly, I thought it was impressive. I know you're, you absolutely love you love yeah. finding a horse, and that's your one of your horses at the moment. But it, it, it isn't. I just think that no, she is. is the number one horse going to the Everest. She's yeah. Oh, I like I, I like other options. Which I like is, other it's options. it's a it's a stacked race. It's very fair enough. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. We'll we'll have a lot of discussion coming into that. But um, yeah, that's next week's job. But um, I'm looking forward to that. Very much looking forward to that. Yes, just quickly before we get into the next week. It is going to be an absolutely stacked week for the Mock Sports Everest breakdown, Caulfield Cup breakdown, plus. Crawford Cup Day and Everest Day. Yeah. It's going to be a very big punting extravaganza. Stick to your socials because more details are going to yeah. be coming out of that. If Likely you, going to be a massive live stream. If Yeah. If you are a new listener coming into our podcast, um, you probably don't know. So we will do our normal quaddy potty for our Sydney card um, for the Everest, but then we will also release the Everest where we probably spend 20 to 30 minutes, maybe even longer this year because it is a very good field where we will go through the entire field, what we think, any exotic plays we want to play, and we have its own podcast for it called The Everest, and you can and you can watch it. Yeah, same thing with the Caulfield Cup. It's literally run by run. We're going to do that for a lot of big races. So if you're new, because I know we've um, – I'm very thankful for everyone that's that's been listening. We've um, – I think we've pretty much close to doubled um, our views have. from last year, um, which is awesome to see. Yeah. Um, which is yeah, averaging over I think seven fifty eight hundred listeners a week is is awesome. We we definitely knew we could do it, but didn't think it would come this quick. But yeah, thank you for that. But um, yeah, Everest, Corfield Cup, uh, Cox Plate. Um, I know we did Oaks Day last year. We might we'll wait and see Melbourne Cup and Golden Eagle. Golden Eagle. Um, so those big races will have their own episodes. Where if you're just interested in punting on that, especially the Melbourne Cup, obviously a lot of people only really watch that race because it's the midweek and it's the biggest race in Australia, if not the world. Um, we'll release that, which is looking awesome, um, which hopefully we'll have a couple of sponsorship things to do and who even knows, maybe some giveaway and stuff that we can try and organize some, something along those lines. That, We're going to try um, and make can, it special. We can, we can give something back to you guys. But um, yeah, so far, if you guys have been tuning in every week, thank you very much. Um, I know we, we do say it at the end, but I wanted to just say something mid midway through because I know a lot of people like to click off as soon as the tips finish. So yeah, thank so you. Thank you very much. Be very strapped in for next week. That's all I'll say. As we head to the hotline, we've got a couple today. Uh, let's just get started with the regular shower bets. Shower bets. Boys, shower bets here. Last week we went all right. Via Fistina. Very good. Very good. Me and my uh, old man flew up to Sydney and watched the rugby up there. Um, I couldn't pick more seconds and thirds. Up. Me and my old man were shocked. I had something like five seconds and two thirds or something. Some ridiculous like that over Randwick and Flemish. Uh, Flemish yeah. Anyway, sorry, boys. Sorry for clubbing on. I'm going to start here. Morning to Glory. Looks really good. I think gets it done. I think the only scare is Fellow Trip Star with 51 kilos. And 
how can you go past Broadsiding and Mr. Brightside? I think them in a multi is great. And um, yeah, there's not really much else like I'm looking at. I think Coast Watch will run a good race. Um, but yeah, boys, I'll, I'll keep it to those four. Cheers, boys. Shout back out. Ew. Fair enough. Again, Do you reckon he's actually in the shower or he just puts his phone near running water? Supply? I reckon his first week must have been the shower. I don't know. He sounds like he would. It's a routine now. It's routine. It's what? You shower, seven, you bet, eight weeks in. you call the mock hotline. It's a nice good. routine to have. It, it is. Oh, who knows, actually, because sometimes you you release it like hours, be- like a, only like a couple hours before. True. I think last week it was only like two hours before. Two hours before. Even. before. So I don't know how often, how often this guy showers. What's his name, by the way? Uh, Charlie bets. Manning. Charlie shower bets. Um, yeah, good bets. Did well last week. We'll see how we go. I like that broadside and broadside. Really like it. Fair yummy, enough. We'll talk yummy, about yummy, that yummy. later. <laughs> We've got one land legend hater here. Once it loads, here we go. Good afternoon, boys. Oh, I wanted to get your thoughts on Craig Williams's ride on Bella. There was a very big gap between, I think it was, maybe Cole Crusher and Marzu that wasn't taken. And instead he went behind Marzu and around. Tell me about like, it. Do you have any thoughts on if you think he should have gone through Cole Crusher and Marzu or do you think he did the right thing? Look, Ran into every ass possible. Yeah. Look, I don't know. I don't know. You got to It's kind of hard. You, it's easy for us to dissect it and go, yeah, fuck, do this, do that, mate. Like when you're in the moment, big race, Group one, like, I don't know. So split decisions that um, the good jockeys do seem to get right. And and lately, and probably in the last probably 12 months, he's he's done a lot of getting it wrong. He cops a lot of flack. He does cop a lot of flack. And I'll tell you, you know but what? The, but the, he's he's doing it on good horses consistently. Like Giga Kick was his first strike, really. That was his first one where everyone went, mm, okay. And look, me and you both went, look. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. In recent times, growing empire, I personally, I thought that was fucked. I'm just going to say that. I know we don't give very, I don't usually give very heavy opinions, but I thought personally that was pretty, pretty up there. No, no real disrespect to him, but I did think there was, could have been done a bit better. And then Bella Nipotina, I do think, Butchered in the end, like we said, great horse probably would have won um, if he took any any other gap. But yeah, it's hard. You don't want to dissect. It's their profession. It's those split second decisions that oh, I could never do it. Um, they're top athletes, but obviously, as a part of this game, you got to dissect it a little bit. And um, I do think he took the wrong gap, but it's hard to go out there and just be chopping heads off the whole time. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I mean. I've learned my lesson when it comes to baking jockeys because it's you, like you said, it's split second decisions. You put us on a horse out there; it's not like we're going to do any better. Sometimes they make the right call, sometimes they make the wrong call, and then at the end of the day, I just don't. I don't think it's fair on him personally. The amount he um, does not deserve the flack no, he gets. No, that's what I'm saying. He makes just the same amount of mistakes as everyone else, but because he does it on really big horses. He gets the there's media a lot attention. Of, there's a lot of money on it, um, but there's not enough recognition, right? So if Bella Nipotena wins, no one even says a word about him. No one thanks him. No one does anything. Like from a punter's point of view, no one goes, yeah, what a, what a fucking ride that was by the jockey. Oh, yeah. Bang. He won. But as soon as he loses, it's the fucking jockey's fault. You know what I mean? It's like the same a, with every jockey. Like, it's, oh, it's, and not the to, not to, sh- not to, shit, Mac- not to shit, on your, shit on your question, bro, but um, it's... um. It's just one of those things where I, f- I feel like it's so easy to just bake bake a jockey when you can, but at the end of the day, no one's given them a, that much praise apart from probably J-Mac. Yeah, and even J-Mac though, you should hear the shit in group chats around Australia and on Twitter. If he's having an off day, J-Mac the butcher, J-Mac sucks, J-Mac's only winning because he's on the best horses, blah, 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 blah. And then he'll come out and have six winners and show his class and he's the best in the world. Yeah, it's like every single jockey, if they're off, they're getting that much flack. You don't see that in any other sport because there's not as much money on it until same game multis came into AFL and NRL and people started texting them and giving them shit. There wasn't any other profession in the world 
where there was that many people watching you and scrutinizing you to the point where if you're good, you're a god, and if you're bad, you're the worst person on earth. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, yeah, I, I think I think we cover what we can. Is that all? All the oh, that is all the hotline. But I will say uh, one thing to a jockey that we've given our fair share of criticism to, but he's taking the absolute piss at the moment, and he deserves his recognition. We just talked about how jockeys don't get enough recognition. I'll put my hands up and say Zach Lloyd has improved out of sight in the last few months. Yeah, we gave you, him I, that much shit last year as an apprentice. We, and uh, whatever you but, did, you know, I never really opened my mouth about him. Well, I've, I've been, been, that's, that's because I've been on the, the this wrong side of a couple of times where I personally thought he got it wrong, but he is absolutely taking the piss right now. He is probably the most informed jockey not named J Mac in Sydney at the moment, and he proved that on the weekend. Fantastic rides all round. Yeah, I think his attitude's gotten a lot better as well. As yeah, not getting suspended as much. He's in his interviews though. Like the, he's just the way he words it's a bit better. The way he speaks for himself sounds a bit better. Personally, he's, he's not getting the elbows out. He's not <clears throat> being like he's talking well. He's I, I'm very much so back on the Zach Lloyd train. Fair enough. Uh, we move to the other questions that we got here. Got one on the YouTube um, question for the Quaddy Potty. What do you do, lads do for work as your day job right now? Teacher. You're a teacher. I work for Fox Sports at the moment, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's what we do. Um, and we do this on the side, but hopefully we can one day make it something. But yeah, a um, more, couple more questions. Um, more of a statement. Everest to be won by Barry Draw, Lockie Howard. 100%. Well done. Um, Edwin, jockey seatings. I think we do that every week, mate, unfortunately. Um, same Edwin again, Cox plate predictions. Um, we both like VR, I think. It's VR or Pride of Jenny at this point, yeah. or the Japanese horse. Take your we'll wait, out of the we'll wait and see. It's a bit early. I wouldn't go for any futures bets just yet. Um, g'day, lads. Samuel Mercer here. VS Sustainer for a Smokey for the Melbourne Cup. Look, I look, they can't look, can't rule it out now. Look at that up there. That's what I was about to say. I tweeted it out earlier in the week. Doesn't this just reek of very elegant? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm maybe not this the- year. I think next year, maybe. I think um, very elegant. Um, we didn't. We on the podcast. I know you had a side bet of your own money. Did not pure loyalty. I yeah, thought did not it- put money on it. Um, winners win at the end of the day, and horses, good horses, find ways to win. So. I wouldn't rule it out. Like um, that year though, all year. Yeah, Cox Plate's the grand final. I'm setting her for the Cox Plate. Two weeks later, she absolutely came out and pissed in a Melbourne Cup. So I would not be surprised considering she's paid up and she's still in the order of entry. They haven't pulled her out yet. So clearly they still have the thought process of maybe sending her. Do they? Who knows? If she goes, is she a chance? Who knows? But there's still the potential possibility of it, guys. Um, another one on the YouTube, Jeffrey. Hey boys, what do you like in the Group One in New Zealand? Livermore Classic. Oh, I've just got it up here. I'll go quickly. Obviously, Champion SR is one that's raced in Australia before. Um, yeah, Opie Bossen's a good jockey that's come across as well. I don't, mate. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know too much. If you want, I don't want to just tip the favorite just for the for the for the sake of it. How is no compromise still running? By the way, my goodness me. Yeah, get it to the. Eight, fine, years, eight years old now. That's probably screaming for a paddock somewhere. Look, mate, I'll be 100% honest. We we don't cover New Zealand too often. Um, the only horse that I've really looked at is um is the favourite that looks all right because um, I've I've seen it before, run before, and it's run pretty pretty well. I think it ran down in Victoria a couple of times. Um, if not sna- snazzy tavy, but, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Um, and then there's I think there was one more question. Buckaroo Caulfield Cup chance for goats seven four something something yeah so one hundred percent we said that top before. four chances yeah um uh let's get into it Rose Hill rundown um track report weather is fine the track is a good four currently but there's a bit of rain around in Sydney probably not too much other than a soft five if that um rails out two meters for the fifteen hundred meter to the nine hundred meter mark out three meters for the remainder track should play quite fairly but of course always monitor your bias uh throughout the day. Look, mate, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty sure at the point with most of my tips, so don't be surprised, punters, if we rattle through these pretty quickly so we can get stuck into Caulfield in depth with those three group ones. But we start with the midway. We already know who you're going to be on, mate, and long-term listeners of the pod already know who I'm going to be on. It's going to be Alabama State out of the Pilkington camp. Two runs where the barrier beat him. He's run on for a very strong place in both of them. 
Right down in the weights, nice draw. Karen McAvoy on. Surely gets the job done. Three dollars ten. Pilko, I know you're listening. Let's get him home, good boy. Yeah, if if you're listening, Pilko, I'm only going against you because I do have um, a bit of percentage in this horse. Cheerf- cheerful legend with Nate Doyle. Um, Twelve dollars, three dollars forty for a place. Been running pretty well. Um, gets another three kilo claim with the Apprentice, who we've had on a couple times, I believe. Um, but yeah. Can't can't do too much wrong. Um, I thought at second place was real unlucky not to win. Um, Alabama State will be good, but I got to go with um, with what we earn. So cheerful legend. So we move to race two, highway class three, fifteen hundred dartboard. Um, will not be betting on this race, punters. If you want a tip, um, look, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you one. It'll be Egyptologist. Egyptologist. Okay. Regan Bayless, two wins in a row, second place, last start. Um, genuine country horses here, punters. Nine dollars, three dollars for a place. Um, look, I I just think I just think if you've been listening to us, you know how we punt. We stake more on the races we like. Um, stay away from the highways and stay away from the midways unless there's something really sticking out. But yeah, stay away from that one, punters. Yeah, Don Stefano for me at Massive Odds, because why not? It's a highway after all. You see $30 horses win all the time, and this horse at $34 to win, $7.25 to place. Um, nice middle draw. Let's them do whatever they want with it. Uh, booking Berry shows me that the camp has a bit of confidence and wants to win this race. Uh, also rarely misses the placing, so I'm just looking for a placing at $7 there. Uh, Don Stefano in the highway as we move to the 2,000-meter benchmark 88 in the race three here. Uh, I respect the favourite, but it's gotten to quite an unbackable price. And considering a few of them are also potentially going to Port Macquarie on Friday, um, he might even end up starting dollar seventies. So I'll be looking for one at better odds. And I see Madatsu. I'm what you see is what you're going to get. I know this horse like the back of my hand. Um, it's one for me before. It's also cost me money before because it just gets so far back sometimes punters and then leaves it no chance, but always flashes home. And it's literally one of those horses. It's, it's like an ice bath, Nick. You can't not back it because you know it's going to give you a little bit of a chance to whether or not it actually puts itself in the race and doesn't get too far back if it can actually get the job done. Hopefully here at $6, Madatsu does me well. I go Mayor of Mount Buller again. Seventh barrier. Tommy Berry retains the ride. Um, look, we'll forget about its last run. Comes into this one, probably peaking third up. Has run third up before. Won its start the only start it's been in um eight dollars two dollars fifteen looks pretty nice um wait and see i think your tips up there as well raf tax up there and um i don't mind kibochi as well but um mayor of mount bullet will be my tip for the third as we move to the fourth uh 1800 meters the tab gloaming stakes swift falcon goes for a week back up here after i tipped it last week there's and a few backups at rose hill this week yeah good to see. it is it is i don't know if that's just the way the prep ends up with um they they want so they can lead into a better race coming into the next couple of weeks. Who knows? But um I have to stick with Swift Falcon. One for me nicely. Um one first up before that as well. Got me started off really nice to get two in a row. And then I got a what was it, the ten dollar one in it? it was, um uh, St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence with um Tommy Berry on board. So yeah, Swift Falcon retains two dollars sixty. Um that'll definitely be in some multiplays, um, which I definitely will have and they'll be on Dabble. So make sure you check out on Dabble for some multiplays punters that well, we got one up on the weekend. So um go have a look. Uh, I'm confident in Henley here. His last two starts have screamed back me next start. So I'm gonna follow him in here. He seemed to be one of the key chances going into the other uh, spring champion stakes. I've already got a bet on Fearless, but who knows if he's actually gonna end up there. This is a horse that we do know is going to be there unless something goes wrong. Um, but needs to be putting in a strong showing here to back up the claims that it is like the one of the best chances going into it. Should sit just off the chasing pack, run over the top of them, hopefully at the $3.70 mark. I think it's either that or Swift Falcon. So I'm, I'm confident we've found the winner there, mate. Um, race five here, the 1,200-meter group two I like Roman Consul Stakes. Very interesting race. It's a field that's full of the B-grade three-year-old sprinters. They're probably looking at uh, Coolmore now because they've missed out on an Everest. Um, and, like, that's basically what happened last year with these horses, uh, the King's Gambits of the world, and the uh, the Osmoses were here. Um, King's Gambit wasn't in an Everest, was it? Correct me if I'm wrong. No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Went straight to the um, Flemington, of course. Osmosis went on to win it. So, I mean, potentially follow this form out of here, guys, for a Coolmore. 
but you'd think Traffic Warden or Growing Empire has that locked up, but you never know. Um, I alluded to it earlier. Switzerland is the one that I like to be. uh, Jesus Christ. Switzerland is who I'm playing here. Failed first up. Shocking. Failed in the, uh, the slipper earlier in the autumn. So you'd probably think it's running for its career here. The fact that they've booked Nash here and whacked, um, uh, is it Regan that's on uh, Gatsby's? Yes, it is. No, no Josh Joshua Parr. Parr. Josh Parr has been booked for Gatsby's. Nash has been booked for Switzerland. So even though Gatsby's is shorter in the market, clearly the Waller camp is more confident in Switzerland here because they've backed Nash, who rides for them more compared to a Josh Parr. And then the fact that, He's basically going to be running here with the intent to win. Otherwise, he might be going off to stud. Surely $7.50 is a silly price, especially if he recaptures that autumn form. Happy to risk him. And, uh, yeah, Switzerland for me. $7.50 to win, $2.25 to place. I'm going rough here, mate. Rough. Uno's Cube. Oh! $16, $3.60. There and thereabouts very, very often. Um, I believe... Let me check punters. It raced at the 1400 last start. It did, yes, in the um, race that had Autumn Glow, Snow in May and Manal. Yes, yes. Um, and it came fifth behind those horses, only 1.8 lengths as I'm reading off. So definitely good form to go off. It's always there or thereabouts. I think he's a bit of a forgotten horse in this race. I think um, the other ones look look good, but um, I think they've just – they've already kind of gassed themselves a little bit. I think Gatsby will be, will be up there, but – um, I think Coleman has been chasing a little bit too much, obviously coming back down to this one. But Erno's Cube is at a price I really like, $16, $3.60. Give me some good good vibes here. So I'll go with that um, there. As we move to race six. Yes, the 1400, 1400 meter. Craig. So um, Alabama State was going to be in this race. Um, we'll talk about it just quickly. Um this race was a high prize money race, but not a listed race. So um, Pilko sent us a message and he put the horse in. As um, as one would do, high prize, and he thought it would be one that um, Alabama State could win, get some prize money for, for the owners and connections, which would be good. Um, and then interesting, interestingly, the day before or hours before, I'm not too sure, they change it to a listed race, and then that's where you see all these big horses coming in to it, which is interesting. So um, look into that how you want. I just thought it was a bit inf- interesting information to share, punters. There's not really much else to say, but um, thanks, Pilko, for that information. Um, yeah, looking nice. A node comes here. Looking nice. I like a node. $3.50. However, Ooh. I'm going to go elsewhere. Okay. I'm going just party. I know you like just party last start, but I'm going to hit with just party here. $5 for the win, not in each way odds, but it's running a bit nice. It's running pretty nice. Going fourth up. I'm hoping it's fitter. I didn't love its last run. Hopefully it gets a bit better, um, but a node, I don't know. So just party for me. Could have chosen a few here. They all have very strong form lines. Um but I'm going snack bar in the end. Like I said earlier, Lloyd's taking the absolute piss at the moment, so I now have confidence backing him in. Um, there's form behind Autumn Glow. There's form behind Mayfair. There's form behind Lady Shenandoah. So you've got the two best uh, three-year-old fillies at the moment, uh, and then you've got a horse that's second favourite in a Caulfield Guineas. So, I mean, that form jumps off the, the page on paper, of course, putting it into a race. Race day is different, but I feel like if he gets a clear lane – to the line and gets to actually attack the line, he can potentially get over them at $5 here. As we move to race seven, 1900 meter group two hill stakes. At least I believe it's a group two. Let me just double check that. Uh, yes, it is a group two. Um, one last year by Montefilia, mate, the uncatchable horse that Montefilia was. We thought she was dead and buried and all of a sudden she came out and won this last year. Um, absolutely stacked with talent. Many, many chances. I've said it on Kovalika. Been crying out for this distance for a while, but it's been forced to be a miler because that's where the money is. Um, And now gets a chance to jump up in distance that will definitely help him. Um, He was held up a bit in the straight, which is why he only came, I think it was fourth in the Epsom last week. I love the quick week back up with the sharp jump in distance. I think he'll love it. I think, again, clear lane the line, if they're able to really rev him up and get him going, I can't see why he is not completely in the finish, if not winning. $6 to win, $2 to place. Honestly, I think those place odds are a gift. 
each I'll, I'll be that's a multi anchor for me. The two dollar cover league at a place. I'm very confident that it's in the finish, if not winning. Fair enough. I go Pericles, um, double nommed for Melbourne. So we'll Could wait be and in see. The two rack. Uh, might be in the two rack. If it does get to the two rack, I will be with you with Kovalika. I know that is um, pretty boring punters, but it's probably a good thing if you like Kovalika. To usually when me and Cash get on the same tips, it does do decently. So um, Pericles for me. If it doesn't get a uh, run, I'll be with Cash there. Race eight. 1,400 meters, another good race here. Um, I'm going to double nom again here. Jimmy Star wins if it comes to Sydney. However, starting, I think, $2 in a race down in, it's, in Caulfield. Yeah, it's like a $2.40 favorite. I doubt Caulfield. it comes up, but if it does, we've put it in the quaddy and I'm tipping it here. If it comes up, doubt it will. If it doesn't, I'm going to stick with Gringotts, um, one that we follow very, 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 very nicely. Um, second place, first up, looking good. By a whisker um, as well, my Yeah, you. so... Should get up here again. That was on one of our bad days as well, I think, the way we were looking for that a was, winner. And um, I'm pretty sure it was. And I think that was actually on the day where we had the seven winners and that would have been oh, number really? eight. That would have been – we yeah. had six I, out of ten on the card. That could have been seven out of ten, I think, because yeah, it was well, Randwick. Wait. I'm not sure. Anyway, $5 for a win, $2 for a play. So just each way odds if you want to go each way. But I'll be going on it at the nose. Gringotts, if not – if Jimmy Star gets a run, Jimmy Star, it's also a second emergency. So I really, really doubt it comes to Sydney. Uh, <clears throat> NCAP, whopping price, $11, $3.30. He flew second up to get over the top of them at 1300 and he'll only relish getting to his per- pet distance here, peaking third up. Funny thing about uh, Gringotts and NCAP, they could have been in the Epsom last week and they skipped the race to come here because it's worth a bunch of money as well. Have an opinion on that with you, Will, if it means that we're getting – weaker Epsoms because they can just skip it to come here with just as good as prize money. Again, take it with that what you will, but clearly they thought that they were more confident coming to this race when they could have taken their place in a very time-honored group one in the form of an Epsom. So there's obvious intent here to win. Uh, loves Rose Hill as well. Happy to play him. $11 to win, $3.30 to place. End cap for me. Move to race nine, 1,200 meters, the Navision. Strong race here for the girls, and I've set it on the favorite. Alentia really came into her own in the autumn, became a little bit more reliable, but also didn't shake the tag of potentially becoming the next Espiona. Same silks, same trainer, same owners, I believe, and was just as unreliable. But she got a little bit more reliable in the autumn. Hopefully, she can really shake that tag this spring. $3 here. Happy to take her. She's typically strong first up, and this is her best distance, so Alentia for me. Agree. Go with it there. That will be a good bet for us punters. So another multi one, maybe even just a place if you just want to be a bit conservative. As we move to the last, Ferrari, interesting. Don't like a dollar eighty-five in a benchmark seventy-eight in the last race. I know a lot of punters will be on it. I'll be on gently rolled twelve dollars, two dollars eighty. Um, you de- you you barely, barely see a lot of low price favorites getting up late in the day. Tracks had its wear by then. Um. Horses got to wait around all day as well to run. So, um, yeah, first up, gently rolled. Had three starts, two in the minor placing. So I'll give it a go here. Um, probably won't be one they'll be focusing on too too much here, punters. But, yeah. I have great respect for Ferrari. She's just at an unbackable price now. I wouldn't be surprised Agreed. if she ends up starting sixty if a few of these horses start to get scratched. Uh, I don't think so. Um, I think she'll go out. Oh, well, hopefully she does. If she gets to over $2, I encourage you to bet punters. Uh, I also encourage you, if you're going to play a, just put her in a multi or stand her out in um, your trifectas and your quinellas. But for a bit more value, look no further than Dollar Magic if you want a horse that's going to put in every effort possible, potentially win. But if not, it's going to be in the finish. She literally always comes second or third if she's not winning. Um, she's a measure of consistency. $11 to win, $2.75. Happy to have her. Like I said, I'll be having a little bit on Ferrari if she does come out to the $2 plus mark. When's the last time we tipped a full card in the podcast without going to the tip off in Sydney? I know. No races to happen in Sydney. I don't think we've ever done that. We Um, always have to skip a couple. Yeah. There was one earlier this year, but, but that was only because that was one race around the country. It's been a while since there's been no races in Sydney when there's like three uh, plus tip off races. Uh, like I said, you're about 15 in front of me. So I need to make up some points somewhere. I'm confident I'm doing this week because I'm actually quite confident in my tips. 
Uh, they might not all be winning, but of course, because of course you've got three short favourites, but I definitely think that they're going to be in and around the placings. We'll start off with Caulfield Race 7, the 2,000 metre Group 1 Might and Power Stakes. Mate, what are your thoughts on this race? Brightside wins won't be back into that price, maybe a multi at best, but honestly, $1.60, I think. What did you say that, about that multi earlier? Was it yummy, yummy? Is that what you said? Yummy, yummy. But look, it's it's hard. I think it wins. It issues its danger. For the tip off, I'll go with something that's going to get me points in case there's a massive upset. Um, with that, probably Coco Sun, $14, $2.50. Um, it's the only one that's not in the top, top weight that I think can win um, or e- even get in the minor placings. If it gets in the minor placings and bright side wins, I still get more points. So, yeah, Coco Sun, Blake Shin, $14, $2.50. Brightside wins, punters, clarify, wins, Coco Sun for the tip off. If it gets up, I'll be really annoyed because I was tossing and turning between going that or a tissue, but I've said it on a tissue. I'll tell you that in a minute. But I'm keen to oppose Mr. Brightside here. $1.50 is absolutely poison. Chuck him in a multi punters. Do not get on him on the head. What are you doing if you're backing him on the head? At I don't $1. think 50? it's. I don't think it's po- look. Like I know why the the bookies have put him at that. Like he, it's it's a price he he. If they put him any higher, they lose money on him because he'll win. He will win. I'm not so sure. He wins. How many times have we argued on this podcast? You included that he's not a two thousand meter horse. He's gone there five times, uh, or five times has he gone two thousand meters. Or more. He's, he's had one year, where though. he got absolutely smashed in the Queen Elizabeth, and then the other time he got beat by a lip in the Cox Plate. But like I've explained before, co- a Cox Plate at Mooney Valley is completely different to a Caulfield or a Flemington where there's a longer straight and he doesn't have to rely on being up on pace and he can fall into it. I don't think he's a 2,000-metre horse. I think the only reason he potentially wins here is because this is the by far the easiest field he's ever seen at 2,000 metres. I, I just c- can't see why that price – should be taken by anyone. I understand why he's at the price, but it's poison odds. I wouldn't be taking him punters. Oh, I yeah, look, I, I do agree that um two thousand meters is not his strong point, but there's just no one here that beats him. There's just no one there that that's what I meant by it. I understand two thousand meters, we've said it time and time again. No one here that beats him. A tissue's the best chance. I'm on a tissue with confidence. Levels behind him. I'm I'm result. confident a tissue can beat Brightside this weekend. Wow. Okay. She can run very well. If not beating punters, I'm telling you, she closed off awesomely last week behind nah. Versus Dina and Buckaroo, which is A-grade form for this. She also is on the week back up. The last time she was on the week back up from 2000 to 2000, she won the champion stakes. Obviously, that was at Flemington. This is Caulfield. Obviously, there were more, you know, there was different conditions on the day and there were different fields. But I think $5, I'm all over her compared to $1.50, Mr. Brightside. Points-wise, Betting wise, tips wise, I think the um a tissue is the winner here over Mr. Brightside. Cool. All right. I'm not gonna sit here and argue with you for for hours. I think Brightside's look better this prep. Um, lost to Pinstriped by the smallest of margins. To, that horse ran the best it's ever gonna run ever, ever. Um, beat Pride of Jenny very nicely at Flemington. Almost got to Pride of Jenny. Almost at Mooney Valley on. A track that's almost unbeatable if you get more than three lengths ahead in the lead. True. Wait and see, I guess. I think it wins pretty easily. Yeah. Caulfield, uh, race 10, because we'll leave the guineas to last. Uh, 1600 meter group one, true rack handicap. Is this a case? Is this a case of another wheel winning or are you looking for? <sighs> I just don't, I just don't like why are they putting a group on last race? They did this last year. Why? Uh, I believe because last year it was on Everest Day. And I remember I blew my load on the only time I ever got on Amelia's Jewel. And that was the day that she went to water because she didn't like the helicopters flying around apparently. But that was because they wanted to keep betting going after the Everest. They wanted people to not just leave because the Everest had happened and the guineas had happened and they wanted to keep people around. Don't know why they've kept it. Maybe they liked it. Maybe that actually paid off for them. Um, But... Yeah, is it a case of another wheel being the only one? I was expecting it to fin- um, sorry start a lot shorter than $2.90. Uh, also, very strange happenings earlier in the weekend. They nominated Pride of Jenny just so they could try and get a couple of kilos off of another wheel's back. Uh, it didn't work because the stewards said, you're not running it. And he's like, oh, we might. You know, no, you're not. Like So as soon as you pull out, we're raising the weights. And that's what they've done. Here. What, did they give a, what did they give another wheel? When- I think it was like 53 because like they gave 59 to... 
product journey, which fair enough. Um, but they questioned him on it and said, are you actually running? And he's like, oh, we might. Like, I genuinely think there's a chance we could. And they said, well, if you if you take her out, we're raising the weights. And because, yeah, and they should have, they did. Dodgy, dodgy, dodgy. He knows his tricks. Um, Pericles, another will. I take another will. Pericles, barrier, only thing that worries me. Um, yeah, another will for me at that price as well. If you get, look. Can I do for the tip off? I'm going to do it because if I was a punter, I can change my tip up until if I was anyone else in the tip off, I can change my tip up until the jump. Correct? Correct. If another wheel goes, gets crunched into under $2, come race, I want Pericles. Fair enough. If it gets crunched into under $2, I think that's fair. If it's anything over, it's a $2.05, $2.10, you can give me another will. Gets crunched into under $2 for the tip off. I want Pericles. So you're betting early on another will, and then if yeah, it comes to $2, you're dipping Pericles. For, for the tip off, yes. I think I'll be betting on another will as well. But yeah. So would you take, because you're confident, um, on I'll be them, betting you, early on this, punters. Would you be going another will, broadsiding, and Mr. Brightside in a multi? Or would you just be playing Brightside and broadsiding? We'll wait and see. It might be on double. There you go. I won't let anyone know. You got to go to double and have a look. Fair enough. Uh, I have settled with orchestral uh, class horse. Uh, I, I see no reason why it should be at ten dollars to win two dollars seventy. She came over and spanked them first up uh, in the autumn. Failed the next start, but still wasn't disgraced. Um, two from two at the mile. Uh, two from two second up. Uh, has only finished out of the placings twice. I'm very happy to take it, even if it places. That's $2.70, uh, which is 2.7 points for me. Um, but, yeah, I think another will will be extremely hard to beat. This has been its target the whole prep. It's gone to another, you know, it was already good, and it's just proven twice now when the chips are down, it gets off the canvas and it gets it done. When? I just I, I cannot let that price go without being on orchestral. If orchestral wasn't in this race at that price, Maybe even if Orchestral was at like $5, I'd be on another will. But $10, I cannot ignore Orchestral for me. Cool. Okay, the guineas, mate. Let's not fuck around here. Broadsiding's winning, but who are you betting on? Yeah, broadside wins. Um, who do I bet on? Probably Evaporate. $12, $2.30. Probably the most consistent horse. Been absolutely there and thereabouts down in Melbourne. Been absolutely running crazy down there. But yeah, broadsiding wins very easily. <laughs> I can't wait to see this horse come against like a real talent. I'm, I'm, yeah, I cannot Cox wait. Cox Plate's going to be very, very interesting. Like the main thing was wait for age. In, in that Golden Rose, nothing's turning. Uh, like Mayfair might run a place and I might take it. I haven't decided yet, but it might run a place. It won't be beating it though because Mayfair was just holding on at the 1400 and broadsiding was going past it with authority. I think, you know, special, special horse. Is it the next Animo? We wait and see. I'll be shocked if this doesn't get up. Um, but, yeah, you can't take that price unless it's in a multi and you can't take it in a tip-off unless you only want 2.6 points. You may as well look for an evaporate and get just under the same amount of points for places or if it somehow gets up, you get 14s. Um, yeah, look, as much as I want to try and gain points on you, I'll take evaporate because... Mayfair might run a place, but it's at a dollar sixty for a place. And I'd rather I think, you know, if Mayfair's coming second, I think Evaporate's coming third. Same thing if Evaporate comes second, Mayfair's that's coming. That's why I third. went with it. That's I look for the like when I'm picking these ones, I'm like, which one's a horse that's gonna snag a place, maybe a second or a third that's paying the most? And I think Evaporate, I think, comes second, but will be at least third. At worst, I think it'll be fourth. And I think not, literally Evaporate's the only horse I am going to go. You know what? Fair. If it somehow beats broadsiding, if anything else in this field beats broadsiding, I'm like, that's crazy. So if Mayfair does, I'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah, Gay Waterhouse. Yeah, it's fair enough. But um, every other one, I'd be like, what the heck is going on? Yeah, broadsiding should be winning, guys, and should be winning quite well. Um, all right, mate. Around the grounds, what have you found around the country? Um, there's not much. Like I said, if Jimmy Star go, I think it's race five, two dollars forty five. If it gets there, um, it probably will stay down there. Probably wins two dollars forty five. Jimmy Star race five, um, and I'll go race nine. Stepati. Ooh, Stepati's back in the frame. Nineteen dollars, four dollars for a place. I love this horse, and um, had a 
not a great prep last start. Went um, up to Queensland, I believe, but always, always was there and thereabouts for a while. But seven runs out of 10 have been in the placings with five of them being wins, $18. Let's give him another chance here. I think the train, change trainers maybe. Um, but yeah, give it a go. Mornington Glory looks good, but Stapati, $19, $4, replace Black Booker. Have to go for it. Fair enough. Um, Caulfield race three, extra two, six dollars to win, two dollars twenty to place. Again, just one of those standard horses that we always back because we know it's going to be there in the finish, uh, and always gets underrated by the market. Race four, City of Lights, five dollars fifty to win, two dollars twenty to place. Um, yeah, it comes up from Sydney. I like its form. Uh, J Mac booked as well. Shows a lot of intent here with it. Uh, and then I was also on Jimmy Star with you, mate. I'm confident that gets the job done. Um, so take us to the Rose Hill Quaddy. So I got one more. Oh. Um, Savannah Clouds in also in race five. So it's in the black book. So maybe I'll go for a place paying six dollars seventy five for a place. So maybe you know a, she's going to put a good effort. In. Same good get same race multi maybe or trifecta play somehow with Jimmy Star and Savannah Cloud in there as well. Quaddy race seven Royal Patronage Kovalika Pericles Attrition. That's one two three four. Pretty easy. Race eight end cap. Gringotts, Waterford, Jimmy Star, 9, 10, 18, 19. I'll talk about that in a sec. Race 9, Alentia, Blanc de Blanc, Roots, Peace Treaty, 2, 3, 9, 10. Race 10, Dollar Magic, Ferrari, Gently Rolled, Storm Bolly, 2, 4, 5, 10. $50 gets you 19 and a half percent. I'll read out the numbers one more time. Just another thing, punters. Race 8, Jimmy, um, Jimmy Star probably won't be there. So we'll. Everything Pericles will get, might also not be there. Pericles as well in race seven will probably not be there. So we'll update it Saturday morning for all your numbers. So um, at the Mock Sports on Instagram. Max, yeah, Mock Sports. Numbers again, race seven, one, two, three, four. Race eight, nine, 10, 18, 19. Race nine, two, three, nine, 10. Race 10, two, four, five, 10. It'll Lovely definitely stuff. change come Saturday, but that's what we got right now for the pod. Best bet of the day, mate. What do you got? Yeah, if I'm having best, oh, if I'm having one bet around the country, I spoke about it earlier. It just a two dollars to place is getting me going with Kovalika, um, and I think it's winning, let alone placing. So I think Kovalika at each way odds is definitely something I'm very interested in. Go early because I don't think it's going to be each way odds on the day. Kovalika at six dollars to win, two dollars to place each way. Rose Hill race seven finally gets to a distance that'll suit him. I think he's just going to rev up down that straight, and as long as he doesn't get blocked off. I can't see something getting in his way, honestly. I think he'll be the winner. If not, he'll be in that top three. So you'll be getting your money back. It is the best. This is the first time I've gone from a genuine betting perspective that, like, if you're not winning, you should be getting money back, punters. Fair enough. Um, there's two that I'm stuck on. Swift Falcon, race four, and then race nine, Olentia. Um, I'll go Swift Falcon. One for me last start, $2.60. Um, should get it done again. Don't see how it doesn't. Um yeah, I'll probably play that into Alentia pretty highly for my my Sydney players. Alentia is in there as well. Tommy Berry, Waller combo, obviously. But yes, with Falcon for me, best bet of the day, two dollars sixty. Um, close second behind Alentia that we're both on. So we'll take that. That's all. Yeah, apart from that, quick thank you to the sponsors. Of course, if you're interested in getting into horse ownership, strider.com is the place to do it. Head there to check out their marketplace where you can sort through all the available horses to go through. And then of course. Dabble, all of our bets are going to be there. Multis, exotics, uh, wins, places each ways. If we're betting, it's going to be on Dabble. Uh, so if you do uh, download Dabble, use the code Mock Sports. Let them know we sent you. Make sure to do so responsibly, though. Set a deposit limit and think about what you could be buying instead. Nick, anything else to say to the punters? If you haven't got Dabble, get it this week. Sign up with our code this week because next week it's we've a got punting a, marathon. We've got next a big week. punting marathon, and we've got a lot of content coming out. Um, like we said, there's going to be different pods for the Everest and some other big races coming up in the next couple of weeks. A lot um, of money going to be thrown A lot of money in and a weeks. lot of collaboration with Dabble. So it's just easier to get on there. So use their stuff. Um, the link's all in the description on our Instagram or just DM us if you want us to get if you want to get involved. Uh, if you want to get involved with the race ownership, I think we still have a couple of percent left in the girl. Um, come own a horse with us. I know a couple of, the, a couple of you were interested. I think there's... Couple of my mates are in on it. I'm in on it. Um, it's pretty cool. You get if you buy in every time it runs, you get a free 
drink at the at the races as well and you get free entry into the members. So yeah, can't complain with that. Plus, we're going to be documenting every single point of its career. So a little bit more insight than a regular owning experience. Awesome. Thanks, guys. See you next week. And back behind those horses, I am unstoppable. Osmosis at the clock tower, led by a length to Shinzo, Arkansas kid, and I am unstoppable is running on the leader, Osmosis, with 50 metres to go. Osmosis is clear and will take it out.